Suppose you are given a 4x4 matrix with entries in the rational numbers and the main diagonal is 1, 5, 9, and 13. Can you always write it in the form a squared plus b squared where a and b are also 4x4 matrices with entries in the rational numbers? This looks like an interesting question and you might be wondering, what is the significance of 1, 5, 9, and 13? Indeed, what makes this problem really interesting is that your first guess is actually probably not the right answer. Indeed, it has nothing to do with the fact that they form an aromatic progression and that is actually a red herring. This problem is taken from the final round of the Alibaba Global Mathematics Competition 2022. I've previously covered a question that is a combinatorics question from the same competition and if you'd like to check it out, feel free to click the link in the top right corner. But do so after this video because we have a really exciting solution coming up. So where were we? Right, we are supposed to find out whether we can always write 4x4 matrices of this form in the form a squared plus b squared. Well, instead of thinking really hard about the a squared plus b squared, let's first consider what is a natural way to write a matrix as a sum of two matrix, just normal sum. Well, one possible idea you might explore is to break it up into an upper triangular and a lower triangular matrix. So maybe you can find a way to split the diagonals into two pieces, but for the upper, strictly upper triangular parts you put in one matrix and the strictly lower triangular parts you put in another matrix. So that is a reasonably good start to try to approach the problem, namely by breaking it into two matrices first. But this actually seems might, like it might actually be a plausible approach because actually the square of an upper triangular matrix is an upper triangular matrix. So maybe the problem is that you can have an upper triangular matrix and then you need to find a square root, a suitable square root for it. So this seems like a possible angle to attack. Now, in order for this to work, we realize that actually when you square an upper triangular matrix, the diagonal just gets directly squared. So x on the left becomes x squared on the right. So if we were to have hope of this approach working, of course we want the, the two terms on the right to be squares, right? So that means if we want this to work in the rational numbers, your diagonal better be perfect squares. If not, you have no hope of finding square roots of the matrices uh, while staying in the rational numbers. This means that actually you should put squares on the diagonal and this is where you start to realize that this might actually be an approach that works because your numbers 1, 5, 9, and 13 satisfy very special property. They are sum of two squares. The number 1 can be written as 0 plus 1 and the number 5 is 1 plus 4. The number 9 is 9 plus 0 and the number 13 is 9 plus 4. So actually, the numbers 1, 5, 9, and 13 were chosen because they are actually sum of two squares and they appear to follow aromatic progression simply to trick you. Right, there's actually one more important fact, uh, one more important property of these numbers that I haven't used yet, but you notice that I can actually put the squares either on the left, the first square on the left or on the right. So for example, 1 is 0 plus 1. Why did I put 0 uh, on the left and 1 on the right? And actually, indeed, you can uh, choose to put them arbitrarily to the left or to the right. However, the only condition I require is that I have only at most 1, 0 on each of the main diagonal. And you notice that 1, 5, 9, 13 allows that because I can put 0 on the... Uh, there's only two appearances of zero, so I can distribute such that one zero appears only on the uh, green matrix and one zero appears in the purple matrix. Why do I need this? This will become apparent in the proof later. So right now, let's move on first to figure out what is the next step. Okay, we have the upper triangular matrix. That that problem will be the whole problem will be solved once we can find a square root for it. So how do we do it? Well, let's simply pretend that a square root exists and try and see whether we can solve for all the unknowns a to j. Well, 
we already know how to find the terms on the main diagonal a, e, h, and j because we can just take the square roots of 0, 1, 9, and 9. So this is uh, clearly solved for a, e, h, and j. Now, uh, by what I emphasized earlier on, at most one of a, e, h, and j is 0. Of course, in this case, you know that a is the one that is 0, but I'm trying to prove it more generally here that uh, if you have at most one 0 on the diagonal, uh, and then the square root will have at most only one zero on the diagonal as well, right? And this property will come in very important later when we solve for the other terms B, C, D, F, G, and I. Okay, so now that we solve the main diagonal, how do we go about solving for more terms? Well, the natural idea to consider is to move one step off the di main diagonal. So we consider one of the main diagonal. And why would that work? Well, let's take a concrete example to work out. So let's consider the term C12. If we were to look at the square root and calculate in a uh, direct manner, we see that C12 is the pro given by the product of the first row and second column. So you get AB plus BE. The very nice thing is that the zeros cause the unknown term C and D to disappear. And now we only have B. We can write B strictly in terms of terms we know, namely A and E have been solved and C12 is uh, what we are given at the start. So this is where the condition that at most one of A, E, H, J is zero comes in because you are going to need to divide by A plus E, which now we know is definitely strictly bigger than zero and division is allowed. So we write B as a rational function of rational numbers. So B can be solved as a rational number. And we see where this is going. If we keep considering only terms that are one of the main diagonal, the product of the uh, square matrix of the on the right will always only involve terms on the main diagonal plus the one term that you are trying to solve of the main diagonal. And you can always then write that term as a rational function of rational numbers that we have already solved. And of course, we are dividing by something that is not zero. So similarly, you can work out how to solve for i by considering c34. The moral story is now we can solve the next diagonal. And naturally, what do we do next? We look at the next diagonal above that. So c13, for example, now if we take the product, it will only involve c as well as the terms that we have already solved, the lower diagonals before that. And again, we can write C as a rational function of terms we already know in rational numbers, dividing uh, in the denominator by something that is bigger than zero. So we indeed again solve that C is a rational number. Similarly, we can solve G. So we can solve for the next diagonal. And again, if we consider the next diagonal, we can solve D to be a rational number as well. So the moral of the story is actually the answer is yes we can definitely solve the upper triangular as a square of another upper triangular. Similarly, the lower triangular can be written as a square of lower triangular. And putting everything together, we have that the original matrix can be written as a square plus b square. So, hope you found this problem interesting. Uh, remember to check out the combinatorics video that I mentioned earlier on. Stay tuned to the channel for more math videos. See you soon.